I might just uh, was the uh, key to you guys pulling this out. Uh, I mean, I thought that's probably the best last five minutes of a game y'all played this year. Um, what was kind of the key to y'all closing out this win today? First, I got to give glory and honor to God for this performance today from our team. Um, but the key was we just had to try to string uh, what we call some kills late. Uh, we, we like to get three stops in a row because we feel like we can go on runs when we get three stops in a row. So all game, Coach Richie had been preaching to us to just get our energy up. He felt like we were playing hard, but he didn't feel like we were bringing our best emotionally and with the energy. So the last five minutes, the key was just get, getting those stops. Once we finally got those stops, we continued to score with them. Um, instead of just trading baskets, we got some stops and was able to get a lead and then push it up a, a, a little bit more. Um, but that was the key, just getting some some kills, getting consecutive stops in a row. And that just kind of kind of shifted the game late, I would say. Just talk about, and they defended you really well on the perimeter um, today, but then you were able to get a, a lot of backdoor layups and easy buckets. Um, is that something you saw early in the game, or, or is it uh, just kind of a, a feeling out process as the game goes along? Uh, that's definitely a feeling out process. Um, knowing, also just knowing how certain teams play. Um, ETSU has a history of really pressuring and trying to make you uncomfortable on the wings and getting in them passing lanes. So if you can make a good back cut, it'll open up the floor for not only just me on layups, but also for skip threes and things like that. So. Um, it, you always got to have a counter to when teams pressure pressure you. Um, sometimes cutting can relieve that pressure. So I, I really was just sacrificially cutting to get other guys open and relieve relieve some of the pressure that they were applying on um, our ball handlers and Slaw and Noah with the ball up top. But um, it left me open sometimes because I, I was able to get a good cut and good look at the rim and cutting hard. So it, it left me open sometimes. Uh, you know, Noah didn't score today, but he had a career high six assists. And, you know, for a big time scorer like that to go scoreless, but not put his head down, still be such an intricate part of the game, that just kind of speaks to y'all's teamwork, right? Yes, sir. And I would, I want to say all, all week, well, ever since uh, the Citadel game, when we got back from Citadel, Coach Richie been telling us that this game wasn't for his current team. This game was to show the world watching um, Timmons, ESPU for the first time, to show everybody, um, show everybody what our brand of basketball is, is about. And um, it's, it was about no, guys like about for us, cool. such as uh, Jordan Lyons and uh, Matt Rafferty, Daniel Fowler, all those guys that came before us. That's what we were playing for. And I think we showed a great brand of Fermi basketball when one of our best players doesn't even score, but he has a career high in assists. Like not a lot of programs, when a guy that's used to going off every game doesn't score, sometimes they're just getting themselves. But Noah wasn't like that. Noah was a great teammate. And that's one of the things Coach Richie preached shows would be a reason why we would get this win is if we would be a great teammate, fly around on defense, and have each other's back. So that, that's what Furman basketball is all about. And that's what we were trying to show. So when, when a guy not scoring, he's going to find other ways to be a great teammate. And that, I'm so proud of Noah for doing that because that's growth and that just shows Furman basketball. And that's what we wanted to do today, first and foremost. Talk about um, maybe, you know, how closing out that game. I know Scott mentioned it earlier, but, uh, it, you know, is that evidence, I guess, maybe of, of a maturity um, that you guys maybe had this year that, that maybe uh, – at times lacked in, in years past? Well, we're a veteran group and it, it, it was about time that the veteranness we have uh, paid off, you know, and a, a lot of times this year we haven't really been closing the way we've been wanting to. And we talk about it a lot and work on it a lot in practice. So to, to finish the game better than we started today, which one thing we, we struggled with on all three years I've been here um, was, very, was very exciting and very something that we're gonna be really proud of looking back on this game finishing because you know you always got to finish in those last four minutes and those are the most important minutes of the game sometimes and um the fact that we were able to finish and um really go on our really play our best basketball in those last four minutes was really huge for uh this team and showing that we can do it if we do it the right way all right um great defensive effort in the last 12 minutes of the game particularly and um you know i thought that 
once we really, you know, they were hurting us on a, on some ball screen coverages and, and really just driving us. And, um, you know, Sloan was really aggressive to the paint. All of them were, and they were really making us pay for it. And so once we really settled in defensively and, and, and started, you know, fighting the ball a little bit more and keeping it in front, those last 12 minutes I thought were key. And, um, you know, then we did a good job on the backboard, which we knew we were going to have to. We uh, won the rebound by five. And, you know, it's funny. The, the, it felt like the lid was on the basket in the first half. Couldn't make some wide open threes. And then as soon as we started playing the game, you know, at the, at the level that I felt we needed to effort wise and from a defensive connection standpoint, ironically enough, we start making some shots and uh, made some big threes down the stretch by a lot of different guys. Uh, Clay shot, you know, on that action on the baseline down five right there was huge. Alex hit a huge back action three. And then Mike Bothwell was just phenomenal all day. I, I thought a couple guys, you know, Jalen Slauson's energy, I thought was incredible. You know, Noah didn't have the scoring game that Noah would want to have and that he's capable of, but I thought that he fought to stay in the game mentally. And I thought he made some winning plays in the second half that, you know, two foot plays, um, some rebounds, some deflections, I thought that were critical to us winning. And, uh, and, and like I said, you know, it's our bench, our bench, you know, a lot of people are talking about our bench and, you know, that's fine. That's okay. We know that we've got really good players on our bench and we know that, you know, for, with the, with the scores that we have out there with Mike and, you know, all, all five of our starters are capable of going for double figures, you know, scoring might not be what we necessarily need, but when Marcus Foster goes in and that key stretch and he gets the defensive stops that he gets and he gets the offensive rebounds, He's going to be fine. Garrett Heen is playing at a great level. Joe Anderson, again, put back-to-back -back performances together that were very good. And, and Jalen Pugh brought great energy. You know, he just it's we, he just got back. You know, he just hadn't practiced a whole lot. So really proud of our bench. And um, Colin Kenny and Johnny Lawrence are still ready to go. And those guys are going to help us, too. So good team win. Great atmosphere in Timmins. And um, fun day to be a Paladin. Uh, Coach, um... You mentioned Noah and the things he did. You know, for a guy that averages 15 a game, he'd go scoreless, but to have a career high in assist. And he had some phenomenal passes in the second half, especially uh, to cutting guards down low. Um, that's that's just a sign of maturity on his part and how this team plays, right? Well, there's you know they were they were really digging hard on his dribble, and 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 there's certain teams, a lot of teams are going to play him like that just to get the ball out. And um, when, when he gets performances like that passing on film, you know, it's going to make people second guess that a little bit. And, you know, they're going to have to make decisions. Are they going to give up the open cuts and the threes by sending a second guy? And, and that's what I've been really trying to get him to understand. If you'll just make them pay for it, right? Don't, don't reward them by over dribbling and letting them come in there and turn us over. Make them pay for it and give them some indecision in terms of what you're going to do. And, um, you know, that's what Matt Rafferty was so good at. You know, he, he, would, he would post up. And then if he felt like he had the one-on-one, -on -one, he, he, would, he would be aggressive to score. If a help defender came, he was going to throw out. And, and it, made, it made defenses really have to make some decisions. And so really proud of Noah. You know, he didn't force it in the second half. And like you said, I mean, six assists, that's, that's, that's really good. And um, if he can just stick with it, he's going to be just fine. He's going to be just fine. We all know how good Noah is. It's actually a really positive for him to be able to go out and show that, that he's willing to be a decision maker and a quarterback when they send two at him. It seemed like, too, uh, to that end, what you were talking about, the passes that he and Jalen made today, do you think it freed up a, a little bit down low where Mike had some driving room then? Uh, the one handoff and Mike goes in and dunks, for example. Was that kind of a, a product of those passes? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you, you, you put shooters out there and you space and you're willing to cut, if, if they're going to really load up to the ball, that's going to that's going to create some cavities to cut in the pass through. And you just got to, you know, it's like they always say, you got to take what the defense gives you. And, and it's not a super complicated game. If they're going to send two and you can get the ball out, then simple math, right? You're going to have a four on three. And then if you can get it out to the weak side, you're going to have a four on three and they're going to be closing out to you. And so it's it's something where, he and he, you know, we had some beautiful cuts today. I mean, we had a couple that were just, that were, that were, you know, from all kind of different players, you know, from baseline drives and post ups to, to weak side cutting. And, um, you know, we were able to get rewarded on those, but you've got to, you've got to be willing to just play the game honest. And, um, you know, if he keeps passing like that, Slaw keeps passing like that, they're going to get to play in one on one. And, you know, Slaw did it in the first half. I mean, he had a couple of nice post moves down there playing one on one. And as his game develops, he's going to be able to do that more. So those guys were really good. And, um, you know, it, it might not have been necessarily the scoring. 
but Noah was a huge part of us winning that game in the second half. Coach, um, I thought today Alex Hunter um, did some in big threes when you needed him, um, and, the, and particularly the one I think from the, the right elbow um, right here to I think give it make it a, a double digit game. Could you just talk about um, how he's come through um, today, how he came through today in those clutch moments? You know, Alex is a senior. I mean, Alex has won a lot of games here, and he's been in a lot of big games. And, um, you know, we gave him that blow. We let Marcus guard the ball for a little bit. Then he came back and, and just was phenomenal down the stretch. And, you know, he's three for six from three, shooting 50%. It's probably bad coaching on my part to not get him a few more clicks up there. But he's shooting the ball at a high level right now. So anytime anytime he's open, I mean, the one he, the one he kind of hesitated on this, the first half that he ended up making, you know, those shots, I want those in the air. And, and when people are closing out to him late, I want him to be confident to shoot it quick. And, and if they're, if we reverse it to him, he's open, shoot it. And every time I see him get a reversal, I, I, I want him to get it up there as long as he can get it off uncontested. And so uh, when he got that back action three, I, I just, I, I knew, I knew that was his time. He was going to hit that. And uh, that was a big shot in the game. Coach, you spoke to this a little bit already about the bench, but um, you know, without looking at a bot score, it seems like every game, you guys have won. There's been at least one guy off the bench who said, "Man, that was he was a difference maker today." Marcus Foster today, I thought, was a huge deal. Another guy didn't score, didn't necessarily. I don't. He had one point. He had one free throw, but uh, you know, zero for three from the field. But what a huge contribution he made. Yeah, and you know, we we we've challenged those guys a little bit, and um, we've shown them some different things that you know outside sources have said about them, and um, you know, just because we want them to understand that. Like come, come ready to play and, and come with a chip about you and, and come with an edge about you because it's um, they're, they're good players. Marcus Foster, he's a redshirt freshman. He's going to be really good here. And you saw him sit down and guard today. You saw him go get those offensive rebounds. And, um, you know, he's got ability to make shots. He's just getting started. He had he missed a month of practice. And then here lately he had another little injury. There was a little bit of a tweak that we had to hold him a little bit. Once we continue to get him reps, he's going to be there. And the neat thing I like about him is, is he always answers the bell. You know, we had all six off the bench available today, and I was having to make some decisions off my gut on who to go with. I mean, Colin Kenny was deserving to play a little bit today. Johnny Lawrence was deserving to play a little bit today. It was just going to be hard to get to that volume. But I went, as they were announcing starters, and I went and found Marcus. I looked at I said, look me in my eye and tell me that you're going to get stops today. And he said, Coach, I got you. I'm ready to, I'm ready to sit down and guard. And when they were really driving us at the top, I just said, hey, let's let's put some size on it and let's see if it can let's see if he can do a good job on it. And sure enough, he did. And, um, you know, so was proud of the way he competed. And uh, yeah, I mean, Garrett helped us win the Chattanooga game. Uh, Marcus comes in here today and, and helps us win this game. I think that's two back to back really good games for Joe Anderson. I thought that, you know, uh, he had that he had that initial turnover. But once he once he got going, you know, I had that beautiful drive for the layup, scoop and score. Played really hard defensively. Thought he brought some good energy. And then JP, you know, we went with JP just because he's an old guy and he's been in this game before. He literally just got back to practice. I mean, he's been through a walkthrough and a short practice. So it's going to take him a little bit of time to, to kick the rust off. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to at least throw him out there a little bit and see if he could get some light and throw one up because uh, I had a feeling he was going to make it. But unfortunately, ball just didn't find him. But he's, he's going to be out there. He's going to be just fine. Coach, um, as you head forward now, you got a tough stretch ahead. Um, you face VMI, who, you know, is a lot, very similar. Got a big win today against the Citadel. Could you just talk about, um, you know, they played tough here at Timmins last year. Could you just talk about that challenge? Yeah, I mean, I think I think John, you know, it's um, you're right. Tough stretch ahead. Tough stretch behind. You know, I mean, it's um, at Chattanooga, ETSU, Mercer here. You know, undefeated Citadel team. I mean. Every game has been a battle, and and that's what's fun about this league is there's just no there's no nights off, and you got to be ready every single night. Great coaches, great cultures, great identities, and um, you know Dan's done a phenomenal job. Those guys are playing with a lot of confidence, and um, you know they've got some guys that have gotten better, and you you can see it on film. Fortunately, you know a lot of the scout is is basically done because we were supposed to play last Saturday here, and uh, the game got the game I, I guess got postponed. Um, to a, to another date that they're still determining, but we'll go up there on Wednesday. We've got to add in, you know, the, from from the Citadel game today and also the Wofford game from Wednesday. But they're they're they've got some guys that are really shooting the ball well. Uh, they've got that matchup that they play that tries to confuse you, and so we've got to we got to be ready to play. 
and every single night, you know, you just gotta, you gotta trust your two day prep. You gotta trust your one day prep. You gotta go out there and you gotta have, you gotta trust your game day prep. And, and you just gotta go try to play the game with the right intent. And um, we'll have some good film from the day. The last 12 minutes were our best 12 minutes of the game. And um, it's because our defense intensified and we had zero kills for the first 38 or 28 minutes of this basketball game, which is three stops in a row for us. And then we got three in the last 12 minutes. And, um, and then, like I said, ironically enough, we start making shots with that as well. So uh, just continue to put more spurts together where we're playing, you know, complete basketball and we're playing connected on both ends. Coach, Thanks, Coach. ever since the Mercer game where things got a little hairy down the stretch, um, your, your closeout ability, I thought, you know, last five minutes is central defensively, especially, and obviously the last five minutes, the last 12 minutes, they like it. Um, it's really kind of improved since, since the Mercer game. Yeah, and I think, you know, like I said, Scott, I think I screwed that game up a little bit by not playing a little bit more of our depth. And um, I've got to trust those guys. They're good players and they're great kids and they're, and they're good enough. You know, I mean, I watch I watch film of everybody in the league and we all got good players and um, they're they're just as good as guys coming off of other teams benches. And, and we've got to put them out there. And, you know, today we, we, we just trusted it. You know, we played two guys. Um, Garrett had 14 minutes. Marcus played 11 minutes. Joe got eight, got JP a few minutes. And I think what that does is that gives our starters ability to be a little fresher towards the end. The Mercer game, because of some foul trouble, I rode those guys a little too long. And um, I think, we, you know, you watch it on film. Mercer made some shots. We looked a little bit fatigued. And so we've tried to trust nine in the first half these last two games. And um, I felt like it's paid off. So we got to continue with that. And the, the good part about it, they're going to keep getting better and better, you know. And, and the more experience we give them out there, they're, they're going to get better and then they're going to get more confidence. And, um, you know, our bench, our bench is going to end up turning into a strength. And uh, before long, as these guys continue to get these games reps.